when you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this video, we feature thymine, also known as vitamin B1. In metabolic syndrome, there's a very good chance you don't quite have enough of this B vitamin. You're not authentically deficient. If you were deficient, you would be in heaps of trouble. Thymine deficiency disorders include beriberi or vernicus encephalopathy. Both of these conditions can be fatal. In metabolic syndrome, you have a functional deficiency. This is a fancy way of saying you don't have enough to meet your needs. It's typically assessed by watching how the transketolase enzyme inside red blood cells behaves in the presence or absence of added thymine. So, what do you need thymine for? Well, in a word, this little B vitamin is needed to burn things. Chief among them is glucose. One of the other significant things it's responsible for burning are branch chain amino acids. There are three of them, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. It's like you've got a choked engine in the car. There's plenty of fuel, but you're not going because the fuel is not being ignited. And a buildup of unburned fuel is the fundamental problem when you've got metabolic issues. Now, thymine's role in this process is not to burn anything per se. Thymine provides the spark. He does this by assisting key enzymes in pretty much every cell in the body. In addition to kick-starting car burning, thymine also sparks some activity in an enzyme called guanylate cyclase. This little guy encourages the tiny muscles encircling blood vessels to chill. When they relax, blood flow around the body improves. So thymine is involved in some important body chemistry, much of which is not running optimally in someone with metabolic syndrome. So why does your thymine have no spark? Well, thymine is something that we humans cannot make. We have to get it from our diet. Good sources of thymine are meats, eggs, legumes, nuts, and whole grains. Foods that give you pretty much no thymine are dairy products, fruits and vegetables, and refined grains, unless they've been fortified, which is the case in many countries, including the United States, Canada, the UK, Indonesia, Jordan, and South Africa. Visit the Food Fortification Initiative to find out what is going on in your neck of the woods. So if you're eating, the odds that you're getting enough thymine from your diet is pretty high. So how could you be insufficient? Well, the problem is more likely something else. Getting thymine in depends on thymine sticking around long enough to be picked up by the thymine transporters. What and who else is in the gut can pose a risk to thymine's staying power. Many creatures, including some gut residents, produce thymineases, which shred the thymine into little pieces. And polyphenols, found in tea and coffee, stop the thymine from reaching the thymine transporters located on the cells that line the gut. And if that's not enough, the thymine transporters can fail to move the thymine in. This could happen because you're unlucky and have inherited a dicky version of the transporter. Or your transporter could simply be overwhelmed. Several commonly used drugs, including some drugs that are used to treat metabolic syndrome, such as metformin, use the same transporter. And getting enough? Well, it's relative. Some people just need more. This extraordinary high demand could be genetic or it could be circumstantial. Some of the circumstances demanding more include eating a high carb diet, being in a hypermetabolic state, which is what happens when you have hyperthyroidism, 
strenuous exercise, being in the business of growing and acute illnesses, major trauma, major surgery, and wait for it, insulin resistance. There are quite a few studies suggesting getting a little extra thiamine can help improve your body chemistry. Now, there are two ways of going about this. Make an effort to eat foods that are thiamine rich or supplement. Just remember, you don't store thiamine, so you do need to consume it on a regular basis. Supplementing is a low risk strategy. To date, there's no evidence to suggest that extra will do any harm. If you take more than you need, you'll simply pee out the excess. Of course, on the flip side, if you're peeing a lot, you're likely to need more. <laughs> Here are some of the references that I've used to tell the thymine story. Thymine is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the body that are amiss when you're suffering from metabolic syndrome. You can learn more about some of the other players in the ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Be sure to subscribe to catch future episodes. And thank you for watching. See you next time.